So, hello everybody. My name is Karisha the Diva. I was originally born in North Philadelphia. Um, started out doing fashion shows there, events, hosting, and stuff like that. But Philly was like really saturated. So, uh, the birth of Karisha the Diva really started in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I got to Atlanta in about 2016, 2017. Hit the ground running. Um, always been in the media industry, always been in the entertainment industry. Overall, I do interviews, I'm a blogger, I'm a media personality, I've interned with the best, and I'm just like the go-to girl when it comes to media. <laughs> so, like I said, I've always I've always been in the media industry. Um, somehow, someway, I used to write for the high school newspaper, the school newspaper, when I was like in fifth grade writing for the school newspaper. But I would really say what really got the ball rolling with Lava Kamisha and really got the diva birth was a bad relationship. When I got to Atlanta, I dated a crackhead, like a real crackhead. And I didn't know he was a crackhead. I really thought I was in love. He swept me off my feet. I really thought that was like Bay, but he was smoking crack. He was an alcoholic. And basically I spent four years in a very, very abusive relationship. Not physically abusive, but mentally and emotionally abusive. And it was during that time when I was at my lowest in my life. I was very depressed. I was not caring about myself or my image. But ultimately, um, being as though he is a crackhead, he was smoking crack one day when I was at an event and he burnt the entire apartment building down. Not just my apartment, he burnt down four different units. And I pulled up, somebody called me, was like, oh my God, Krishi, your apartment's on fire. Pulled up, entire apartment burnt down. This was a brand new apartment, brand new wigs, brand new clothes, everything in it was, was fabulous. It was burnt down. So I went to go see him in the hospital. And I really, I really didn't want to go to see him in the hospital because I was kind of nervous. But when I see him there, he was still drunk and high out of his mind. He was not coherent. He was not, you know, making sense of anything. And he had the nerve to sit there and be making fun of the nurse who was taking care of him. The nurse was a gay man and his nurse was gay. So every time the nurse turned his back, he's sitting there laughing and joking about the nurse. Not understanding that you just burnt our entire apartment building down and you're alcoholic and I have a life. Like, I came into this relationship with goals to do something and I put it aside for four years for you so it was at that point where I was like you know what fuck this shit I left the hospital I never went to go see him again and I started doing Lava Carisha interviews gave my name out there and that was in 2018 2019 and that was 2022 and I published I work for Hip Hop Weekly um, I block for The Source this is 50 I block for myself I've met everybody in the music industry and that's that's what got the ball rolling I love Beyonce, I'm in the Beehive. I've been to every single show, I know every single song. And everything that she has written is something that could fit into my life somehow, some way. So usually when I'm really depressed or at my lowest, I really just turn on to some Beyonce, feel like I'm a diva, singing at the top of my lungs. And before you know it, I'm back into my happy place. So music is really a good solitude for me. Prayer is a good solitude. Working out is a good solitude. And just, I know life gets really, really hard. And sometimes you're at your lowest and you really just want to give up. But let me tell you, when you're at your lowest and you want to give up, you can easily give up and not see what can happen or you can keep pushing and it's at that breaking moment when you keep pushing that usually you rise up like a phoenix and it's it's insane you just gotta keep going <laughs> you know I, I gotta have a drink um i like ciroc i do think a shot always takes the ease off a little bit but again music so before i do like a major interview or a major event I sit in my car, and I always make my team wait for like a few minutes. I sit in my car for a few minutes, turn on the Beyonce really loud, or if I gotta get ratchet, put on the Pooch I see or something like that, put the music on, take a little sip, take a little smoke, get in my bag, and then when I step out that car, it's all a go. Like, I already mentally prepare myself for things, so I just, you know, try to stay focused on what I have to do until the event or the interview is over. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm nervous, I just keep pushing. So in the next three years, Carisha, I would like to be married because I've been in this game for a while now. And obviously I'm still young to black girl crack, but I do want to one day find like real love and have a family, you know, raise some kids, live in a good neighborhood, be successful and be happy of all things. Now with the brand with Lava Carisha, obviously I have to hit a network. I've been reaching out to several networks for us, by us, Maverick Films, Access Hollywood, be on a network. Um, I have a clothing line that I want to get off the ground. Went my mind jumping into some movies. Just overall propelling my media platform to the masses and reaching more people, getting out the country, doing some events out the country, tapping outside of Atlanta, and just keep growing and growing and growing and elevating. Mm -hmm.
Vegas, I love Vegas. <laughs> Vegas has been treating me good, but y'all know I really want to go to London. Like, I want to go to London, and it's crazy because I was asked to go to Africa a few years ago to um to host a fashion show when I was doing fashion shows. But that was at the time when I was dating a crackhead and I was not mentally focused. And ladies, this is good advice. If he cannot add to your table, you gotta get rid of him. Cause I could have I could have been with Africa about five, six, seven years ago. But like I said, I'll get there. I wanna go to Africa, I wanna go to London. Um, I definitely want to do some stuff in China. I think China is a major city, to, a major place to tap into. Um, I want to do some stuff in California. I've been there before, but definitely more events in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I feel like LA is overall the, the stomping grounds where the diva is going to really birth at. Atlanta is good, but no place beats Hollywood. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. So my team just did a Young Blues pool party about a week and a half ago and I totally dropped the ball on myself. I, I obviously we know how big Young Blue is. Like he had this song with Drake. So when we got there, the shit was not ready. My backdrop, it was very, very windy that day in Atlanta. So my backdrop would not stand up in the, in the wind. It kept tipping over. Guests were pulling in on buses. Like he had buses of people coming in for the pool party. So we had to literally tape my backdrop up on some poles in front of his mansion to make it stand. And I was not happy about that, but I felt like we had to get it done because now we're looking like idiots because Blue is here with all these celebrities and rich people and you don't even have a proper backdrop. But when you see the footage, I think it comes out pretty good, but we had to tape the backdrop up. I didn't have any flyers made and the pool party was packed with so many different people, so many different artists. I was not prepared, I didn't have flyers made and I I didn't have business cards. But you know what? Whenever you get a major at event or you have something going, you just gotta push Joe. Like the number one thing in show business is the show must go on. Yes, the backdrop was not standing up on a pose, but we take that thing up. We swept off the red carpet, made it look presentable as best as we could, and we still got the interview and the content with Young Blow. So when you have things going on and you're not prepared, just keep pushing through. Cause even though you might feel like you look stupid or you're embarrassed from the outside looking in. Sometimes people don't even know something's going wrong with your brand or your business. So you just, just fake it till you make it basically. <laughs>to be social media friendly and this is a good question because when I first started my Instagram a few years ago I didn't have any followers I didn't get any likes on my pictures and my twin sister shout out to my twin sister Chris Lalucci <laughs> she's a rapper she was like how you gonna call yourself a diva and you only get like 20 likes on your picture you're not getting no traction social media whatever field you want to get into you have to be a people person whether you want to be a lawyer or a talk show host or a rapper or an artist or a videographer or you want to sell products, you have to be able to talk to people and get your products or your brand or yourself out there. So always keep that in mind with whatever you want to do. And some things that I do to stay focused is people need to understand you got to write shit down. Write it down. Even if it's just an idea or something that you need to remember that you need to get done. What I do is at the beginning of the week or at the beginning of the month, depending on how big I want to go home, I write down things that I want to accomplish for the week or that month. And I, I, my living room is covered with poster boards of goals and stuff that I want to get done. Like I never pull the old poster board down. I just keep putting stuff all up. I'm a psycho. Write it down and knock it out. If you write it down and you manifest it, you can achieve it. I guarantee you what you put into the atmosphere comes back 10 times fold. And you got to stay away from negative energy. Like that's a really big thing. And I feel like that I could have been flourishing. But like I said, dealing with somebody who is not happy with themselves and doing drugs, that negative energy rubbed off on me so bad where I felt like I wanted to kill myself because I mentally just was not happy. But the minute I got through, got rid of him and his little sorry ass family, took off. Mm. Surround yourself with positive people. Hey world, <laughs> it's your diva. Follow me on all platforms at Carisha the Diva. Instagram, Carisha the Diva. YouTube, Carisha Diva. Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat. Website, Carisha Diva, CarishaDiva.com. Follow me everywhere and I will be hitting some TV networks soon. I don't know which network is gonna take the diva, but come and get me because I am open to the game. And I just want you guys to be on the lookout for my work. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put content up all the time. I am gonna be like the hip hop Oprah Winfrey. Like, I feel it. And I feel like the world feels it too. And hopefully you guys can see this story and feel my hunger through the cameras because I can't be stopped. Like, I'm the best at what I do. Y'all are good. Y'all interviews are good. They really are. You know, I'm not taking anything for you. But, you know, I'm the diva. I bring the personality. I bring the vibes. Okay? You know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know how I'm coming. Peace.